Quinta, with international name Molave, ravages different parts of Luzon and Visayas, causing massive floods. The typhoon makes its landfall five times, first in San Miguel Island, Tabaco City, Albay, at 6.10 p.m. on Sunday, October 25. The rest of the typhoon's landfalls are in the provinces of Albay, Quezon, Marinduque, and Oriental Mindoro. The Bicol region and Mindoro Island are among the areas severely impacted by the typhoon. The typhoon causes intense rains and winds, toppling trees that fall on houses in Dangay Rojas, Oriental Mindoro. Several houses in the Gaspi Albay are submerged in chest-high floods. In Lucena City, Quezon Province, trees are uprooted, prompting the City Engineering Office and the City General Services Office to launch clearing operations to make the streets passable. The typhoon's strong winds also destroy some houses in Agoncillo, Batangas. Several areas in the Visayas regions experience knee-deep floods in their area, such as Calbayog City, Samar. In Claveria Town, Cagayan Province, a wide area of a rice field is flooded, causing the owner to lose his harvest and source of livelihood. Typhoon Quinta or Malave moves over the Bindoro Strait late Monday morning, October 26, leaving the landmass of Luzon. Quinta is the Philippines' 17th tropical cyclone for 2020 and the 4th for October. Celebrities show their support for actress Angel Loxin's hashtag no red tagging campaign by wearing red lipstick in their photos. Loxin posted a photo of herself last October 23 wearing a red dress and lipstick with the hashtags no to red tagging, yes to red lipstick. Actresses Cherry Pai Picache and Agut Isidro post photos on their accounts. Pia Magalona, wife of the late rapper Francis Magalona, also expresses solidarity. Other personalities who show support are singer Between Escalante and actress Eugene Domingo. Luxin is also the subject of red tagging by Armed Forces of the Philippines Southern Luzon Command Chief Lieutenant General Antonio Parlade Jr. Actress Liza Soberano and beauty queen Catriona Gray were also red tagged by the general. Meantime, Cavite Governor John Vicar Mulia bans the posting of anti-communist materials across the province starting Monday, October 26. He also slams Parlade and says he is concerned over his red tagging spree. Lieutenant General Antonio Parlade Jr. should be ashamed of himself, threatening progressive and outspoken women who want to encourage a stronger feminist culture that does not make them co-conspirators nor allies of the left wing. Grimulia is one of the first local politicians who slammed the AFP and Parlade over their controversial red tagging of activists. His ban on the posters is the first reported effort of a governor to reject the military's anti-communist activities. The Philippine government and the military have been tapping the National Task Force to end local communist armed conflict led by Parlade for its anti-communist materials. Vice President Lenny Robredo is currently under self-quarantine after she was exposed to a person who later tested positive for COVID-19. Robredo makes the announcement Sunday, October 25, through her official Facebook page, adding that events under her office will be done online until necessary. She says her quarantine begins on Friday, October 23, until she gets a swab test. The development comes at the end of what the vice president described was a blockbuster week. Robredo, known for her pandemic response activities, opened community learning hubs throughout the country and launched livelihood and out-of-school job programs. Robredo was scheduled to visit the recently opened community learning hubs in the coming week. Meantime, the health department says it is studying the saliva-based COVID-19 tests being used by the Philippine Red Cross for its accuracy. In a DZMM interview Friday, October 23, Food and Drug Administration Director General Eric Domingo says a health technology assessment of the DOH is checking if the saliva tests have the same accuracy as a swab test. Like the swab test, saliva tests also undergo the reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction technique, which is the gold standard for COVID-19 testing. Ilonga beauty queen Rabia Mateo wins Miss Universe Philippines, but her win is marred by controversy after a fellow candidate posts cryptic messages online hours after the pageant. The 23-year-old is crowned in a pre-taped coronation day in Baguio City on Sunday, October 25. She is the first title holder to win under the new Miss Universe Philippines franchise. During the final question and answer, Mateo is asked to name a Filipino whose image she would want to put in a new paper currency. She says she will use the face of the late Senator Miriam Defensor Santiago, also an Ilonga, because she used her voice to serve the country. She ends her answer with, quote, She is the best president that we never had. The gig candidate Sanja Lemonon posts a cryptic Instagram story after the pre-taped finals, causing a stir among pageant fans. She says, Get ready, loves. Tomorrow I will be announcing big news. 
it's time to be honest and speak facts. In another post hours later, Sandra writes, The truth always comes out. It's just about timing. Karma is real. Soon. Because we deserve justice. Miss Universe Philippines National Director Shamsi Supsup Lee, meantime, posts an Instagram story saying, To bear defeat with dignity, to accept criticism with poise, to receive honors with humility, these are the marks of a true queen. Lemonon later posts on her Instagram, Accepting defeat graciously is one mark of being a queen, but what you forgot to say is that real queens play fair. Mateo will represent the Philippines in the next Miss Universe pageant. A quote card claims Vice President Lenny Robredo supposedly said she is ready to become President of the Philippines. This claim is false. There are no records of Robredo saying the full quote attributed to her. The office of the Vice President also denies it. The quote card was posted on the page Laban Pinas on Thursday, October 15. It has at least 1,800 reactions, 1,200 comments, and 1,000 shares. Robredo supposedly said, The Philippines is wrapped in darkness. Let's bring life back to every citizen. I am ready to become president of the Philippines. Robredo said similar things in the past but never all at once and in different contexts. At an anniversary celebration of the Liberal Party in 2018, the vice president was quoted saying, There were many times in history when the country was also wrapped in darkness. She also said in previous interviews, she's ready to take over the presidency should anything happen to President Rodrigo Duterte as it is part of her role as vice president. <music>